Hey, what is up guys? My name is KJ Whippy and welcome back to another Redstone video. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I wanted to go ahead and work on some things uh, with the release of the latest 1.17 snapshot and the skulk sensors. I thought I'd just go through and uh, come up with a few ideas on some simple things you can add to your Minecraft builds. And the first one here is probably one of my favorites and it was featured in a uh, Redstone video, my mumbo jumbo. Um, and it's basically a two-way redstone output system uh, using skulk sensors, and it's wireless. It's completely wireless. There's not a single bit of redstone dust in this at all, unless you count crafting the redstone lamps, but that's okay. So basically what it does is when you press this button, the signal will go all the way across and light up that lamp, but it won't activate the bottom row because they're just far enough apart to where the signal won't reach that one, but it'll reach that one. So if I were to do the same over here, sends it off to there but it doesn't go to the top row so this is really cool and a really compact way of sending like long distance signals if you need to activate redstone that's really far away or if you're trying to like send a message to your friends uh, just that kind of stuff because it's cool and I'm really glad that Mojang is deciding to go ahead and go along with this kind of idea I think this is a really awesome add uh, to the game and yeah so uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one have you ever found yourself trying to get a door open and you you know you could use a lever but once you go through you know you have to click the lever again to get back out and it, you know it's just a pain that way or you press a button and it's just too you know it's too quick of a pulse you know it it's scary you don't want to get smushed right so what you could do is add a pulse extender and I'm using these pressure plates here as my power source so if you walk on through goes up and it's open for a nice amount of time and you can see it just closed there. And so this is the pulse extender right here. And so all it requires is a couple of comparators and a bunch of redstone dust. And what it does is when the output is going through here, um, it cycles the energy through uh, this circuit here. And so the comparators eventually suck up all the energy and it eventually runs out. But you can use the repeaters here to have an equal amount of power and then once the power isn't enough to get to the repeaters, the repeaters turn off, you know, basic stuff like that. So if we were to do an example of this, you could see they're going through and you can see that the power slowly fades away from that and they turn off. So this is something really useful. And the best part about it is that you could extend it as long as you want. If you wanted like five rows of comparators, you could absolutely do that. I mean, sure, it would be a really long pulse, but it's definitely still possible, and I think it's one of the coolest things about Redstone is that you can make a pulse as long as you want. This next build is a really simple uh, pumpkin and melon farm, and it's really cool because um, of how compact it is. I mean, it only requires like this 4x4 four four block space, and all it does is when this pumpkin gr grows on this dirt, uh, this repeater will power it, which powers the redstone, which powers the piston to break it and push it into the hopper. As you can see, you know, I've kicked up the uh, random tick speed every now and then to see if it'll work. And obviously, you know, it does. Um, but you just want to make sure, of course, you have a light source in there as well. Um, and you can use a redstone block here to keep it flush. Um, sometimes I'll do like a lever on a block, uh, but it doesn't look as nice. So using a redstone block uh, really helps the outer wall be flush. But if I were to go ahead and set it to 3,000, you can see just now it pushed it again and again. Uh, you can see that it's going in there nice. Um, but if we're lucky, we'll see when it doesn't work. And uh, that's just because it'll push it out of bounds. It'll like push it away from the hopper, um, which, you know, that's that's a sacrifice that you're going to have to make if you make this. Um, this is really just a starter melon farm. So if you make this, don't expect too much of an output. It is kind of slow. If you want... Uh, fast results, maybe make multiple, you can make like a tower of them, uh, something like that. Uh, this isn't the most efficient thing ever, but it is really nice to have, you know, if you're trying to go AFK, uh, you can definitely just set up one of these and just go AFK and then you'll come back and you'll have however much you'll get within the time span that you leave. That's how words work. So let's take a look at this three by three door. Right, okay, it looks nice, but if you look at the redstone, it looks really confusing, there's a lot going on, and it's kind of clunky to look at, you know? You know, you press it, and it's not really that fast of an opening, you know, that middle block goes down really slow. Um, it's a nice design and all, but it goes just a little too slow for my taste, so I 
prefer this one. You can see it's not exactly the cleanest of openings, but look how fast that opens up and closes. And the best part is it is so compact that it fits within a one block wide space. It's insane. And I'm actually going to show you guys how to make this right now. All right, to build this door, you're going to need 64 blocks of just any building block that you want to use. Um, it doesn't have to be 64, but you should bring a good amount just so you can build the circuit and build around it, scaffold and stuff like that. Uh, you're going to need 10 observers, 10 sticky pistons, one piston, six redstone dust, two redstone repeaters, two dispensers, and a lever, or any activation source that you would like. Um, if you wanted to use any of those um, there, uh, you could definitely use that as well. So let's go ahead and just get started with the build. So the first thing you want to do is place a block there, and then two blocks later, place a block like that with a dropper and an observer facing away from that dropper there, and then another observer facing from that block. And then what you're going to do is place a redstone dust like that, an observer peeking out from there, and an observer facing like that, two sticky pistons, and then a regular piston facing down like that with a block next to it, and then that's pretty much that for there. And then you place two blocks up like that. You can place your blocks like that and place a sticky piston there with an observer, oops, an observer facing up like that. And that's actually the whole bottom circuit done. So what'll happen is these will push up, that'll push out again, and this will be activated again, which will push out the second block. Sounds confusing when I say it, but when you see it in action, it'll make a lot more sense. So the next thing you wanna do is place the sticky pistons like that and place in your wall block like that, and then the roof blocks as well, like that. And then you're gonna place a couple of blocks like that, and redstone dust going in like that. You're going to place observers like that, so you can get an observer facing in with like there, and you place two sticky pistons like that, and then that's pretty much it for the top circuit, uh, half of it at least. And then what you want to do is you want to get an observer, place it there, a couple sticky pistons like that. Uh, we're going to reset all these blocks here. And then you're going to get a dropper and redstone dust on top. And then an observer, an observer, and an observer. You're going to place a block on top like that. A redstone repeater set to four ticks and a redstone repeater set to one tick and that is actually the entire door completed except for the couple blocks that I'm missing there but then if you're to go ahead and activate this thing you'll see that it all goes into that nice three by three area activate it again and there it goes so there you go there's a redstone door for you um, I think it's really cool I think it's an awesome design it was uh, made in like 2017 so it's already three years old and who knows how many updates that's been so the fact that it still works with modern redstone is amazing and I can't wait to see more builds like this alright this next bit I want to show you is an automatic sorting system and this is one of my personal favorite things to make I mean it's a pain in the butt to make and it's very expensive in terms of iron for all the hoppers but it is one of the most useful things you could ever build out of redstone Seriously, like, I'm not even kidding. This thing has made life so much easier for me. Imagine being able to take a chest and just dump everything in there, right? And it all just gets filtered through and it sorts itself, right? So you can see that I have it labeled. Uh, I have diamonds, gold, iron, copper, and then just junk. Um, so you should see the diamond went in here, the gold went in there, the iron went there, there's the copper, and then everything else that didn't have a specific spot went to the junk chest. And the way that I did this was with this system right here. So I have the line of hoppers that drops it into the storage system. I have the second line of hoppers, which has one of whatever item you're trying to sort, and then every other spot is filled up with one, and then the last one is filled up to 18. Now, the reason it's three and then 18 is because that is the exact amount that it is just before this gets powered, which will unlock this hopper and let something through. So for example, if I throw this in here, you'll see that it'll let it through because it powered it just enough to where that turned on for just short enough to let it through. 
And so when you make the sorting system, you're going to need two of whatever item you're trying to sort. Uh, one for this hopper, and then one more for this hopper, because there will have to be a sacrifice of an item um, having to be stuck in this hopper here, uh, because it won't power it long enough to let both through, it'll only power it to let one through. So keep that in mind when you're making that, and then when you make the junk drawer, it'll just have it go through uh, to whatever isn't sorted, and it'll go through there. You'll see that none of these are uh, specifically sorted. And then the last thing that I want to make note of is that you want to make sure that these hoppers here are facing into the comparators, otherwise it won't work, because they always try to go to the side before going down. I mean, they always go down before trying to go to the side, and I'm not really quite sure why this works. I'm honestly just trying to make up excuses. I'm dumb. It's fine. But yeah, so if you guys want to make this, um, that's how you do it. All you need is just a cup, you know, if you want to make one... Uh, set up all you need is a repeater a redstone torch two redstone dust a comparator 21 total items that you don't need to sort and then two of the item that you do want to sort a couple hoppers and Bob's your uncle so have fun with that all right this next one is just kind of for fun um, it's gonna be really loud so just a headphone warning um, but you see this giant floor of redstone lamps well if I were to just kerplop there it's really cool because it's like they detect where you're walking and it lights up so this is something that's really cool um, if you wanted to do uh, like a map where it's like a maze or something and it's dark and all you can do is use the floor to guide you you know I feel like that would be a really cool uh, kind of setup um, this is more of just a fun one it's nothing really too technical it's just skulk sensors under redstone to uh, lamps so it's not really that big of a deal. I just thought it was cool, and I think it's something fun that you could add. You, know, you could add a dance floor. It kind of, kind of hurts your ears after a while, but um, you know that's why there's a volume button. So, all right. So next up, I'm actually just going to be talking a bit about the science behind the skulk sensors. Um, I know that um, they're really confusing to work with, and there's so much intricacy with each aspect of it. But I'm going to do my absolute best to describe how awesome these things are. So you'll see here that I have these labeled for different frequencies. And that's what skulk sensors use to set off different redstone outputs is different frequencies. So footsteps gives off a different frequency than jumping. You know, it's less than that. And then jumping is less than chests or buttons, you know. So those kinds of frequencies, um, you can actually use skulk sensors to detect specific frequencies so you can see here that you know when I walk around those redstone tor uh, lamps get lit up I keep trying to say redstone torch those redstone lamps light up right and that's because this goes through powers this redstone dust which goes through the um, repeater into the redstone lamps but the footsteps aren't high enough of a frequency to go all the way through to block off the repeater to keep them from turning on so if we were to jump for example that's too much of a frequency it should be at least no it's being dumb stop jump there we go okay so you can see there it went through and it actually closed off the repeater which kept those from turning on so a different frequency made these redstone lamps turn off you can specify which frequency you want to use this is the coolest thing ever so basically um if you wanted to have you know if like it, you wanted it to detect a player running by then you would use that if you wanted to detect a jump however like that you can see that that actually went through and that's because i have a chest taking away some of the power from the comparator so it'll go through and so that's the beauty of the subtract mode in the comparator is that the subtract mode will basically have its set amount of power and then whatever amount of items are in this chest will subtract that much power from the comparator in subtract mode, which will mean that the power coming out of it will be less. Again, super complicated the way I worded it, I'm not good at explaining things, but it makes relative amount of sense. So if we wanted to have a frequency of footsteps give off the same amount of power with a jump 
right? We would need six stacks of an item in a chest to take away that much power. Does that make sense? So you jump through there and it goes through. If we were to walk, it's not enough because it's subtracting too much and it won't go into that. If we were to open a chest, it's too much frequency, so it'll go through. Does that make sense? <laughs> so if we were to do a chest, for example, then we can't walk, we can't jump, but we can open a chest and you'll see that those lights actually turned on. You can also activate a button at the same frequency and it'll work. And to do this, you're gonna need 18 stacks. So it's quite a jump from jumps to eight, the chests, but honestly, I think it's really cool. And on, if you're going like netherite mining or something, you're gonna have a crap ton of netherrack anyway. So you're not gonna know what to do with it. Well, now you do. You can use it to make skulk sensors with specific frequencies. So the next one you wanna do is the uh, placing of a block. So placing and breaking blocks also gives off different frequencies. And this, you're gonna need 20 stacks of items and you place a block and those will go off. You break the block, however, and it's too much. See that? Place a block, it's just enough. Break the block, too much. For breaking blocks, you're gonna need 22 stacks, right? So you place the block and it's not enough, but you break the block and it's just right. And then one of the strongest frequencies you could possibly have is the piston, right? So if we were to jump or walk around, you know, it's not enough. Jump, not enough. Opening a chest isn't enough. No, what you need for this one, for 26 stacks, almost an entire single chest full of items, a piston. So if someone were to try to activate a piston inside your house, and you wanted to know about it, then you could have a skulk sensor set to that specific frequency to set something off, so that way you'd know that someone activated a piston. I think this is one of the coolest features probably ever added to the game. And if you sneak, by the way, it won't detect you at all. Even if you jump, nothing. So as long as you're sneaking, you're good. So I know that this was a lot to take in, and I know that at the beginning of the video I said simple. This is not simple, it's very complicated. But I'm going to put the numbers down in the description just so you know uh, what kind of frequencies and how many blocks you're going to need to have those specific frequencies. So hopefully that helps. All right, this next one is one of my personal favorites, and it's something that I've been messing around with for a long time, ever since I was but a wee lad playing on the Xbox 360. Uh, and this is slime block flying machines, uh, specifically elevators. You know, stairs are boring. What you want to do is go up in style. And you want to be deafened by the elevator that you have constructed. So these things are really, really, really simple to make. All you need is a couple sticky pistons and a couple observers facing out. So that way they detect when there's movement and they'll power the piston to pull the next thing down, you know. And just setting them off is really easy. You just send the redstone output to like a piston like this, which will push in front, setting off the observer and down it goes. So for example, just like that. So... These are, these are really fun to make. I know that they're kind of expensive early game just because you don't have a lot of slime or a lot of honey. Um, and yeah, that's the other thing. You can use honey if you're running low on slime. Um, you know, if you have a honey farm, you can use honey blocks. Uh, so that's really cool as well. So this is one of my favorite things to make, I think, ever. Um, I know I keep saying that there's a lot of cool things and a lot of these things are the coolest things ever. But honestly, this, is, this is, brings back a lot of nostalgia for me as well. So, um, yeah. Do you ever make a door and you really just don't want to have any buttons or pressure plates or levers or anything just laying around and making the wall all ugly? Well, the best way you can do that is with a redstone torch key. So the way that I did that was really, really, really simple, and that is with this contraption right here. So this is the redstone torch key. So what you do is you place the redstone torch on that block there, and what happens is it powers this block, which pushes the redstone block down, depowering the uh, repeater, which is set to two ticks, um, and therefore it depowers that, which will pull this block down, break the torch, and reset everything. So it's a very fast set of events, but just like that. 
And you can see, if you look at the redstone dust when I do this, it turns off for a very short amount of time, and that's actually the output of the redstone torch key. So if you wanted, you could attach this to the door, you could attach it to a toggle flip-flop like I've got here, where when you activate it, it'll bring that block down for a split second, the power will go through just barely uh, to the repeater, which will shoot out this block, which powers off the redstone uh, torch and lets that door close again. You know, so it's just, it's a very nice way to make a flush entrance to your base or to anything really that you want to activate. So, um, again, one of my personal favorite builds, I think it's really useful. And honestly, I haven't really used it that much in any of my builds. I've only made it in my testing world and maybe used it like twice in a build. Man, I don't even use the stuff that I, you know, have. And this last one, I'm actually not quite sure i mean it looks like a a redstone lamp display but i don't know let's just sub subscribe dang who 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 put that there hmm i i don't know anyway guys i hope you enjoyed uh this has been a really fun video to make uh just going through and making a bunch of redstone devices and stuff it's been really fun and it's been a nice break from finals week um, I know I should be working on finals, but I also really wanted to get this done for you guys, especially since I've seen a lot of questions on a couple of my redstone videos. Uh, and it's really cool that, um, you know, you guys are so happy that I'm able to answer them. But um, I thought I would make uh, just a, a little redstone video to help you guys um, as redstone creators as well. So um, I know I'm not a professional or anything, but I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my video. And I hope that I will see you guys next time.